So the new Inside Star Citizen actually dropped a little bit ago. I uh, just not getting a chance to be able to watch it, but let's go ahead and do run through, do a reaction, and see what we've got. At first glance, Star Citizen is a game about spaceships. But when you look under the surface, we're really building a universe of the first person with trading and lading, exploration and devastation. And over the next few weeks, we'll be exploring such character related features as the new personal persistent hangers, new visor, lens, inventory and shopping apps, the character customizer, which is so good, I'm just going to already tell you we're covering that next week and much more. But before we leave our combat era of ISC, this week we're sitting down Definitely can't wait to hear more on the, the uh, character customizer. It's always fun to kind of be able to do different things and actually kind of make each one your own. The current one's not bad, but from what I've seen of different ones, uh, the uh, actual build that they have, just some of the previews, really, really looks like it's going to be really good. Now with members of Team Nuck, we really got to get these new teams new names. Uh, to discuss all the FPS combat related changes coming in Alpha 323. Let's find out more. Go on, man. Get the, get the power shot. It's a bit awkward to sit down. Oh, oh my wow, dude, you're so cool. Is that a nerf gun? My mom thinks I'm, like I'm a, wicked, uh, mate. TV gun or something? This game Guessing gun is 930 years in the future. Why does reloading matter? Reloading, I think, matters because from a player perspective, it makes you think ahead of the combat that you're about to go into. Is it's part of a classic FPS experience? I think it adds to the. Dude had a beard. Of the combat that you're about to go into. Because from a player perspective, it makes you think ahead of the combat that you're about to go into. Is it part of a classic FPS experience? I think it adds. Yeah, that dude's got an epic beard. De definitely, once we start being able to do some of that, I think that's gonna be really, really cool too. Adds to the tactical element of gameplay, thinking on the fly, and it's also quite satisfying to reload weapons. I, I find it satisfying anyway. You give a little bit of thought that situation you're going to put yourself into, it feels a bit more immersive. We obviously have a bit more of a complexity. Not gonna lie, I absolutely hate reloading weapons, but I understand the, the functionality of it because it means if you're using a gun in a game, it's basically, you only have a limited supply of ammo for most of them, and it's gonna have to reload at some point with our magazines so we obviously have magazines on the suit and we also have magazines in your backpack you need to make sure that these magazines are as full as possible so we are making you think ahead about the combat situation that you are going to go into so for alpha 323 um, reloading is kind of two parts uh, first, you've got your backpack reloading, and then you've got your ammo repooling. So backpack reloading solves. From what I know, the ammo repooling that's going to actually be fairly nice. Just the fact of being able to kind of combine all your clips and everything into one would be great. Uh, a problem where, for example, you find yourself in a situation in a combat, and you need to reload, but you don't have any spare mags on your suit, but you have. Just saw something on a crime step. Combat, and you need to reload, but you don't have. To reload, but you don't have. 
Yeah, it looks like as soon as he like took that guy out, a crime stat immediately popped up. Like I don't didn't don't know if that's automatic, which would be really really good, uh, especially to help with like griefers and things like that. If so, that's awesome. If the other person actually did be able to select it, that was pretty quick. But I, that would definitely be a very welcome addition to uh, the change in the crime stat system and everything like that. If that is the case, we're just if you do something like that, it automatically does it. Have any spare mags on your suit, but you have in your backpack. What you can do now is pull additional magazines from your backpack at the cost of an increased reload time. It was just filling up a lot of your inventory, so we basically decided with um, Backpack Reloading that we wanted to kind of condense that gameplay and just do it more on the fly. It is a reload, but it takes a little bit longer. It's going to play a very simple animation. So the combat flow isn't broken, but you still need to think ahead because this long reload duration can be painful in the combat if you're not careful. Because we really want to incentivize players to think about when they're going into combat, what they need to think about, how much of magazines they want to keep on them and how much they want in their backpack. The last thing you really want to do is pull out, you know, open a UI and pull out magazines from here and move them across there. This allows you to keep in the combat, in the action, without having to go through inventory menus. You will be able to see how many magazines on your suit and how full they are, and a backpack icon if you have magazines. Yeah, being able to reload actually by just out of the backpack, even if it does take a little bit longer, it would be great. I hated the way that DayZ did the reloading, where you literally had to pull the clip out, reload each individual bullet. It's just annoying. I, I don't understand why they went that exact route with it. I understand that you are supposed to have like limited ammo, but it still, I think, could have done like some kind of an automatic reload type thing especially if you had multiple clips that were already loaded and you could just switch them in and out without having to drag stuff around all the time i know it had a reload icon on it but it still just didn't seem to work for me too well on your backpack and if you see your magazines icon but a backpack icon then you will understand that the next reload you're gonna do is going to be a backpack reload so it keeps you in the flow but it forces you to wait a little bit. The punishment of not preparing yourself is still there, but it's lighter, it's more forgiving. So with repooling, the idea being that if you've got lots of, let's say, we take a 30 mag uh, ballistic magazine, let's say you've got 15, 15, 15, you've got three half empty magazines. The idea being is you just hit a key binding, the animation will play like a rummage, and basically those magazines will condense down into full magazines and then automatically discard the empty ones. As a result of this process, you will save your precious suit item ports, and then you will have your ammo condensed into your fuller magazines. So That UI actually looks really, really good. I like how that's done. It's especially you can see kind of the bullets just decrease down as it went that that i think will be a very very good addition to the game so you're ready to unleash their full potential onto your enemies so with our new ui display hud we've basically got a number of the bullets in your magazine and then we've also got a number of your combined bullets on your total player and duration of this operation is going to depend on how much ammo you are shifting around and the type of ammo that you're shifting around. So repulling pistol magazines is going to take a different amount of time than repulling rockets, for example. That means that we're spending less time in the inventory screen and more time actually in gameplay. This all will be in 323, but after that, we will be looking into throwables and consumables. So you will be able to repull your grenades and your med pens. And there are still a couple of unclear points about some weapons, for example, multi-tool and it's salvage canisters we're still exploring what options we have over there so recoil is part of the identity of the weapon and it will also allow players to express their Looks skill like a in a Hulk Hogan certain way just long we have different hair. kinds of recoil very subtle recoils and very wild recoils and depending on that you can paint an image of either this is a very harsh very very aggressive assault rifle or a very 
gentle pistol, maybe even with a silencer on top of it. When I've been watching CitizenCon and we showed the new recoils, one of the biggest feedbacks was, those are laser weapons. They don't have recoil. Oh God, if, if I see one more form post about like, why do laser guns not? Well, why, why don't laser guns have recoil? It drives me up the wall. Laser weapons in the first place, like we have them. I mean, you would think even if it is a laser weapon, it, with the amount of force and stuff that's coming out on some of these, it's gonna have some recoil no matter what. I would think at least. I could be wrong, I'm not a big firearm type person, but I mean, hey, you never know. Are really unrealistic for themselves, right? There are no big laser projectiles that come out of weapons. So giving them recoil is very sensible for a game. I think getting rid of recoil in that sense is just boring gameplay. It's fun. It needs to be in there. You know, you need a challenge when shooting people. You need a challenge when tracking people. I think you need recoil in order to balance the game and make it fun for everybody. You'll see in 322, we put the new procedural recoil in, and it looks mint, I think, personally. Uh, the weapons now use our entirely new procedural system. And the nice thing about the procedural system is it means that we can basically have shot-to-shot -shot differences be massive. So you'll see when you fire the P4 now, it can basically be an entirely different bit of your screen than it was in the previous shot. Whereas before, we had a very linear motion. Imagine before the recoil would essentially go like this on your camera. But now it can be, you know, kind of doing this all around the place. Far more aggressive, and the overall feeling of it is like, oh my god, this is actually a gun. So some of this the is in 322, and some more is coming in 323. So for example, the sniper rifles, these are gonna have, uh, the majority of the sniper rifles will have the new procedural recoil, and the majority of the pistols will have the new procedural recoil. So you'll see some of the pistols, their, their personality will have changed a little bit, but their functionality will still be the same. And you'll see the snipers basically feeling a lot more powerful and angry, as you've seen with the other weapons that have had their passes. And with the new recoil system, this just feels like a real weapon and it feels like this, this thing just has impact, right? You know, you want your weapon to feel angry. If the weapon is just stable and still on the screen, you'd be like, oh, this feels pants. So we have not... You can see where it kind of came up there, which I'm assuming that was probably an NPC that they killed that time, but a little bit more clear shot of how it just kind of popped up. One thing I am noticing is that it's it's kind of off a little. Um, you can see where it's got the crime committed homicide, then right kind of under it is a shadow. I wonder if that's intentional or if that will be fixed later. I'm hoping it'll be fixed because it can be definitely hard to read, especially you can see kind of over on the other, yeah, that way. The top right corner up there is it's very, very blurry there as well which I'm assuming a lot of this is going to be kind of fine-tuned. But it, it's at least a, a start. This probably is kind of more of the actual the helmet uh, interface, whenever you put it on, is what my assumption is. But it still looks pretty cool, though. Not only just scopes, we have a whole new suite of iron sights for the majority of our weapons. So what this has done is we've essentially got stuff that has raised the camera upwards and given a better target acquisition window. This is obviously with a lot of sci-fi guns. They're very chunky, they're very kind of fat, which is just how a lot of sci-fi things are. So naturally, we've managed to improve upon this by saying, hey, you've still got that fat chunkiness, but we've raised the camera up and we've managed to make this, the sight line cleaner for your, for example, your Kana rifle. Fighting in a carrot, gotta love it. On the scope side of things, we've basically overhauled how they work. So previously, if you were looking at anything that is, you know, an eight times or above, it would basically have a black border around the actual scope bit itself. But now that is gone. The graphics guys did an amazing job at implementing the shaders for these. So the scopes just look way more realistic than they used to be. Nice reflections and a parallax effect. This is something different. Just a gorgeous view. I can't wait for you guys to see them. It's probably that is a very, very nice little view of how the scopes are going to look on it. I like that a lot.
the most exciting thing for me personally in 323. If you look through the scope, you actually see the scope inside. And depending on if it's a holographic scope, a telescopic scope or a TV screen scope, the shader will look different as well. And then we took it and brought it to basically every scope, adjusted the shader so that it looks nice on that particular scope and added a few other functionalities to scopes as well. For example, we will have multiple zoom levels on scopes. Currently, we just have eight times zoom, but in the future for 323, we will be able to have eight times and 16 times zoom or two times and four times zoom. And because our new recoil is a lot more aggressive and dynamic, it means that the reticle is moving as you'd expect on screen relative to where the actual barrel is. So not only does it help with the new procedural recoil, it also helps with the believability of the optics as well. So I think the whole... That uh, I think will take a little bit of getting used to. I'm not sure how, how that'll feel at first, but I guess like anything else, once you get used to it, it's not that bad. Scope experience or ADS experience with scopes is just gonna get better from here on. Dynamic Crosshair is also coming in Alpha 323. Dynamic Crosshair is it's in the name, it's a crosshair. But the good thing about our crosshair is it's a little more futuristic, a little bit more sci-fi. So in 323, when you equipped a combat visor, you will have a dynamic crosshair on your screen. This follows the barrel of the gun, which is really cool because if you're reloading and you pull the gun up like that, the crosshair will actually go off screen like that. So it fits into the aesthetic of Star Citizen because it's grounded in the context of where the barrel actually is, which is really cool because if you've got a pistol which shoots a bit more up like this, it actually fo follows it as you would expect. Previously, you were always kind of point shooting and it causes a problem in not knowing how big your crosshair actually is for your weapon. So we had to make the, the spread on the weapons a bit smaller than usual because if you're going to point shoot, you have the issue of like, where is my bullet actually going to go? This allows us to say, hey, this is actually kind of what your, you know, your cone of spread is, and we can increase the spread values of weapons themselves, which leads to better gameplay and people actually focusing on ADSing down sights, even in like 10 meter engagement ranges. And that will be handy because I, even though I don't do a lot of FPS type of stuff, um, just being able to actually aim down the sights and be able to get like the actual view of everything definitely makes it a lot better for at least in my opinion to be able to see what's happening it also just gives that player a little bit of extra information so when you're hiding behind a wall or um you're close to uh, proximity with an object the crosshair is actually going to let you know if you're going to hit the object or if you're going to shoot past it i heard people saying this is unrealistic i fairly certain we can do this with our technology today so 900 years in the future shouldn't be a problem to have at least military tech to have this crosshair component to them. It's a crosshair that not only fits the aesthetic of Star Citizen, but cleanly fits into what you'd expect for Star Citizen as well. We are able to deactivate it, so if you don't like it, there's a menu option for you. You can also disable the new hit markers independently of the crosshair. So if you just prefer to keep the hit markers, you can keep them. If you prefer to keep the crosshair and not the hit markers, you can do that as well. So you can fully utilize it to make it. I definitely would rather have the whole hit marker and everything. Just, I'll, I suck at FPS games usually. Um, accuracy is not the best and my reaction was really, really bad. So having that, I think, would definitely be beneficial. Get your own, what you want from the games. You can have it completely off or on. And then we have things like, obviously, updated hit markers. And we also have a final hit red X as well to let you know that you've confirmed that kill. It's a completely optional feature, but I think you're going to like it. So I think the reason why I'm so excited and the team is so excited about why these new changes to FPS are going to be so dynamic and, and completely change the game is I just think it makes our game so much more modern. It makes it so much more lively uh, and really expressive. Now weapon manufacturers are going to have much more a unique brand to them. And the same with the uh, with our new amazing scopes. You know, if you compare the scopes that we have now uh, to what we have coming in 323, it is gonna be completely, I think, game-changing. Uh, we're obviously gonna do- Well, that was rude. You're just giving him a thumbs up.
move things in the future, like when we get wear and tear in, apply wear and tear to when you shoot those things, because we still want that to be, be a believable experience. Bullet blocking is an issue. It will literally be gone from like grenades and magazines and everything like that, so even backpacks. So people previously would have to shoot people in the legs if they wanted to consistently land shots, which is a problem because realistically that's not a good feeling of like, I'm behind you, I have to shoot you in the legs so I can focus on shooting you in the chest now. We really like the fact that that'll be definitely a lot better because just knowing that that was even an aspect of it, like the bullet blocking, but I didn't really know it was there, but just knowing that that was a possibility having that fix is going to be amazing. Uh, the crosshair is basically kind of starting the whole archetypes for armors. So as we move down into the PU, we want our armor sets to become uh, more specific to their units. If you look at our game, half of this is basically FPS combat. And these improvements will bring the FPS combat to AAA standard and make it feel like yeah more polished experience it's not something that you can put into words but something that will yeah that you will appreciate while playing our game and even though it is like the half of it is fps right at the moment i feel like a lot of stuff is still fps type stuff pve like just kind of more relaxed type gameplay doesn't seem to be as much with the exception of cargo and stuff at the moment i know salvaging mining but i just think we need more stuff to be able to actually relax when we're playing the game as well not so much always in combat or always having to focus things so just a thought i had not sure if it will, will change anyone's opinion on anything but you never know and i hope all of these changes make your time in the verse more fun i think this just is so much more about gameplay it's less about getting bogged down in menus it's more about on the action and it also integrates so amazingly with our hud a fluid experience which is what we're aiming for which is what we you know really want to deliver i'll see you in a bit oh i have to get the microphone yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what did we learn this week we probably can't do this in a helmet. We learned that procedural recoil system reaches all FPS weapons in Alpha 323. That the dynamic crosshair will enable some occasional hip fire goodness. That new scopes means better ways to refund your enemies' lives. And that reloading changes means more of the pew pew and less of the few few. Sometimes I hate me too. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. For the character customizer. That one will be nice. I'm actually really waiting on that one quite a bit because it's fun making them have your own. Now I want to peek go to uh, go the whole Pulp Fiction route on. That'd be funny. But anyway, that's this week's Star Citizen. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you in the next one.